The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. This is Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. Larry couldn't make it this morning. I'm sitting in. I usually do the noon time show, which I'll do today again. This is the uh, Tiger Technicians Hour at noon till 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And also, I'll just mention that I have a newsletter called The Opening Call, Daily Newsletter, very comprehensive. And we look at the market every day and what we're looking at in terms of uh, the bigger picture, the small, smaller picture, and what sectors are working and stocks, etc. And of course, we have positions that we monitor every day. The YM, that's the Dow futures, are up 18 at 28,301, just a little off the all time high. It was made just three days ago. Um, let me just show you this for a moment if you're not used to my work. Um, I have just three patterns that I look at it's a straight line, in this case, it's down and up. Um, it's an arch or a cup formation or a combination. So it's one, two, three. And sometimes you can mix one and two, which will be in this case a down move and then an, a, an arch. It's called the lowercase h. We call it the dreaded h in the Chapman Wave methodology because if you take out the left side low, you can keep going lower. And on the right here is the reverse uh, y pattern. This is green because if you take out the left side high, you can keep going higher. All right, and the only other thing I'll mention is that we look for alphabetizing each higher peak all the way to an, a G, e, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But it's the fourth highest peak at D that other things can happen. You'll see over the period of the show how many dozens and dozens of times you've got Ds that are so important. All right, what we're looking at here is that you've got a leg D in the monthly chart of the Dow. I'll go to the cash index for the moment. Uh, I'll explain what I'm looking at. So in the cash index, we've got the Dow monthly chart in leg D. And that's really unusual because um, you've got a discrepancy between the S&P in the monthly chart only in leg B, the QQQ, that's the NDX 100 trading vehicle, only in leg C, the New York Stock Exchange, which finally, after two years, well, a month early uh, than two years, making a leg C above the January of 2018 high of 13,635. Uh, it's right now 13,795, 13, up 20 cents pre-market. Uh, this is a leg B. It goes to a leg C. This is a peak B if there's no new high. But if it extends today, it continues leg B, 13,825 was the high of yesterday. And uh, the weekly chart is only in leg B. No matter how hard I've tried, look, there was a high of 13,611.49, the week of the 29th of November. 11.49. The next week, the week of the 6th of December, the high is 1206, less than a point higher. But that extended the move. Now there's a chance that I might have to go back because all of a sudden you're looking in January and the, maybe the market's down. The, the New York Stock Exchange is below 13,300 or 13,000. Then I have to go back and say, well, there was an alternate count here. It should have been a G or I should have counted these um, nominal new highs. No, I try to be as strict as possible. Leg B says that the weekly chart, and now you've also got a pattern that I call Chapman Wave Stalk Leg for in the weekly, he has the leg, long move up, then it goes in an oval. It's not a rectangle. It has to be an oval pattern. It's called the body. And if it takes out the high of the body, which in this case is 13,255, the week of the 17th of July, it took it out right there. Uh, the week of the 1st of November, it started a new leg up. And lo and behold, we've got a pattern here that says this should be the neck. But there are other things that are going on. It also has a characteristic of like a propeller shaft. You've got the blade here. You've got the um, fulcrum, the midpoint of the, the shaft itself. And then you've got to move up. 
that almost matches the move, initial move. And it looks like a propeller shaft. This particular one is really bullish because what happens is it makes a high level consolidation and then goes even higher. And eventually, when this concludes, then there is a very serious decline. So the weekly chart is still very positive. At, at the very, to get to a D, at the very earliest you could do it, and let's just say all of next week, shorten week, all of next week, the last, is that the last week now? Go on. The last, no, it's not the last week. We still have Monday and Tuesday of the following week. So a shorten week next week, let's just say it's a down week. And that makes a peak B in the New York Stock Exchange. The next week it goes one penny higher than this peak B. And that takes you to leg C. Then you still have to get a down week for peak C and then a leg D up. And that takes you into January. The way I'm looking at it, January should see higher high, January should see higher highs. Um, but most importantly, 2020, based on the monthly charts, should see higher highs. Okay, let's go through these numbers real quickly. Um, I'll go to the YM. The YM is the Dow Futures. It's up 19. The uh, E-mini, let's go to ES. Uh, we're going to December. I don't believe it. I mean, to 2020. 20. There we go. That is in leg C in the monthly chart. And it's trading at up to 25 at 31.97. The high yesterday was 32.03. Uh, let me double check. 32.0. Yeah, 3.50 has to go one penny, 25 cents above that, and it extends leg B. Can you believe they're about to talk impeachment today? Vote. And the, the market's not doing, it's neutral. Anyway, and the IWM, which is the Russell 2000, IWM is trading up 32 cents at 165.02. Now, I haven't changed this notation. I believe this really should be a B, and we're still going to go to C to be in line with all the others. But here we are. You see the pattern I drew it in the stalk leg. Look, there's the leg. There's the oval. There's the neck. And then the, the beak comes right back into the oval pattern. Well, here's the oval, and this is in leg C in the weekly chart. Uh, does it become that one-to-one -to, -one to the move up to the, like a propeller shaft or not? But... Here's a rectangle formation. The rectangle formation in the monthly says the high of August at 173.39, August of 2018, plummeted to December low of 125.81, um, and then it ran up. This rectangle suggests that over the period of 2020, we should see a move in the Russell 2000 ETF towards right on or just above the 173 all-time high, and then it could have quite a quite a bit of a pullback. That's the way it's looking in the monthly chart. So so far this all looks quite good. Let's go to gold. Gold right now is down three and a half at fourteen seventy seven. It's just stuck. A rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. And there it is, just stuck between uh, fourteen ninety on the upside resistance and the downside. I'd say fourteen sixty. It's just right in the middle of it. Weekly chart is still consolidating. Same thing with silver. Here we go. SI <clears throat> silver is down 0.09 at 1697, stuck in its rectangle formation. The dollar is showing strength. I like the dollar. We've liked the dollar since April of 2018 when my subscribers went long. We're still long. We've taken a little bit off, but we're still long. I think the dollar is going to go higher in 2020. It's at 97.44 right now, up 23 cents, consolidating a huge move at a peak D, that fourth highest peak in the daily, the weekly, and the monthly. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sending you for the one and only. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I can you not enjoy that Mozart right there? All right, so now what we're looking at is the dollars holding well. The EUR, USD, the Euro dollar currency, just typed it into the den, rather type it here. EUR, USD, uh, trading down 1.118. And you remember yesterday when I did Larry's show, I was saying this might be repelled from the 200 period moving average. It must hold. If it goes under 1.110, that's just not a good sign. Just sideways action here, the USD JPY. <clears throat> this is the yen. Made a V-shaped pattern. That's that cup formation. And it's holding okay at 109.50. I wouldn't be surprised if it tries to get to the 109.80 area. Um, but the 109.14, that, that is really important support to hold. It is in a leg D. Remember, D in the daily, D in the weekly. D, D way back in um, earlier on at 112, it made a peak D, plummeted down to the 105, 104 area. So he has another D. We'll see what happens with the dollar yen currency pair. Now, I wanted to go through these, and then I had a request in the den. I'll get to that. So crude oil right at this moment is down 42 cents at 60.46. I've got this as a peak C if there's no new high today, and then it should make a D, and then it could be pulling back. But if the if the uh, this is a continuous contract, crude oil continuous contract. If it starts to trade in the 62.25-ish area at any stage over the next, uh, I'd say, next three, four sessions, that 63.07, 200-period, uh, this orange line in the weekly, so daily on the left, weekly in the middle, monthly on the right, that 200-period exponential moving average becomes a magnet. The MACD is good. The moving average convergence, divergence, the stochastic's just okay at 59. It's not really doing much. And that's the reason why this rectangle formation has been so powerful. Here as well, you've got this oval pattern and you've broken to the upside. So that makes the whole area of the 58 absolutely important, 58 to 57, really important support to hold. That's crude oil, continuous contract. Here we go. HG is the uh, high-grade copper down 0.02 at 2.79. Uh, it hit. I drew this rectangle in the other day, so I think it's trapped in this range uh, between 2. Point, these numbers are always so big. 2.8305, and the support is at 
This is a continuous uh, pattern. But this weekly chart, this cup formation, says it could be bumping into resistance, strong resistance at 2.88. Um, then I was asked about would I do um, platinum. Yeah, platinum's kind of stuck like gold. It's in a higher range, but it's still stuck. It's trading at 9.30. It's up 40 cents. It's got, it can, if it can break to the nine, uh, nine, uh, 953 area, that's going to be really good. But if it pulls back to 9.10, it's just stuck in a range. Uh, palladium had a spectacular move. Peak E in the Chapman Wave methodology, but the MACD is good. Stochastic is good at 85%, but turning down the blue line is on balance volume. And the relative strength says its last rally didn't have enough strength. And its leg D in the in the weekly chart, monthly chart has gone all the way to it's a spectacular move. Aberdeen physical palladium. I think that it's got tremendous support between 180 and 176 in this area right here. Um, let's see. I wanted to do. There we go. So we've got KC, which is coffee. <clears throat> There's that peak D we were talking about for a few days. Leg D, leg D, leg D, all the way up. It's a floating letter, and it makes a peak when there's a lower high. So in this case, there's a good chance that today we see a peak D, and I drew the rectangle in that says between about the 125 to the 120, uh, 130 area, that's key support for coffee. Coffee continuous contract. Uh, LC is live cattle. Makes a peak D, big sharp move down, but it's got really good support. It's at 126.50, down uh, up 20. Hmm, still up. How can that be? Oh, from where it opened. Okay. Uh, but most importantly, the 125s to 124.50, that's going to be key support for live copper, live hogs. Is it live hogs? Lean hogs, sorry. Lean hogs has made a peak C in the lower range. It's really struggling. And I had said the other day when we were talking about it, that until I see lean hogs moving into the 73 area, and it's at 69.65 right now, down 20 cents, it hasn't yet closed above the 14 period, the black line, the 14 period exponential moving average, just except one time, a week of the 26th of July, it hit 93.6. And... The previous time before that was way back in May, where it was 101. So this is a huge move down. It's just saying, so far, nothing to see here. It's trying to establish a base. It might take a little bit longer. What am I leaving out? Oh, I'm leaving out sugar, SB. SB has made a peak E in the daily chart of the Chapman Wave, leg B in the weekly, and only a leg A in the monthly after making a leg D to the down, P, a trough D to the downside, that monthly chart, this is the first time it's testing the 14-period moving average in the, in the monthly. It needs to close somewhere in the 1380. This is uh, sugar. This is called sugar number, number 11, continuous contract. And then the weekly chart will be improving tremendously, and you'll finally see some strength in the uh, monthly. In the meantime, I would say 13 to 1280 is key support. It has to hold that. Otherwise, it's a problem. So far, it's looking quite good. Am I leaving out something? Probably. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So ALB, I believe, is what asked in the den. <clears throat> AL, A, ALB is a symbol. This is Aberdeen Core. I think they're in the industrial sector. Um, it doesn't matter. The chart is saying that it's finally establishing some kind of a base. It's at 66.44. Oh, 68.70. I'm sorry. 68.70. The whole... 66 to 64 area is absolutely key support. And what I'd said is, yeah, I, I would probably nibble here at start a position because it's trying to make a cup formation. But it, it absolutely, I'd have a two-point stop just initially. And if it can touch, still with that stop, if it can touch 69.26 to 69, maybe 43 over the next two, three days, I would raise the stop on, on, a, on, on a core position by one point, and I'd have a trading stop on the other, but I would probably add to it if, it's, if it can have just a small dip to the 60, it's a 68, 77, towards the low 68 area. And then if it turns up, I would have one part as a core position if it can get, uh, it needs to get to the, it really needs to get to the 69.30 area. 
and then you can have one as a call and one as a trading position. And all I'm saying right here is that there's tremendous resistance between 70 and a half and 72. Oh boy, you'd love to see 72. If it's just a quick trade, then treat it as a quick trade. But if you're looking into media term, there's a rectangle formation here on ABL, ALB, Aberdeen Corporation. And that, that I'm, I'll put it in here, but there's really a smaller one. That smaller one is there. So the smaller one is the one you want to trade off in the weekly chart. And the monthly chart is horrible. It needs a lot of work to improve. But you can only go from the daily to the weekly to the monthly. That's how the steps move. You need to see improvement there. The future's up 35 in the Dow. S&P futures up four. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting in for the one and only Larry Pesavento. The market will be open when we return. It should be very exciting. I'll be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading in larry's first week alone he sent out 25 charts six videos and a full report to his subscribers in just one week if you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade then larry's service fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try right now new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk sign up now to larry pesavento's fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters the Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're looking at the futures. The E-mini, there's a 10-minute chart. A very nice move to the upside, considering what's going on, up 350. But the day is young. I suspect that by the end of the day, we will have a dip to negative. And that'll be the big test of what happens by the close. Let's just do a couple of things here. Uh, let's see. I want you to go to, I'd written down, I'm not sure I can get this LB's lumber. I wanted to have a look at this. Uh, no, I don't get that lumber. Pity. So a couple of things that are going on here that are really important. If you look at the volatility index, this is the VIX. <clears throat> 
It's at it's at eleven point ninety four. So my contention has always been that the VIX in the um, below thirteen, but especially in the twelves or lower means that you've got buying support. It doesn't mean that now the market has to go to all-time highs, which it's been doing, but it doesn't mean that. It just means you've got tremendous support. There's a favorability to leaning towards the buyers. If you look at the 15s to the 17s, that's where you start to see some weakness. It used to be, things have changed a little bit in the volatility index, because it used to be that if you were in the 16s, you could see an intraday a uh, pretty good chance of a strong double digit down, maybe even triple digit down in the Dow. Maybe the the S and P futures can go to uh, the S and P can go down to maybe a minus 13 or so. But there was room to come back by the end of the day. But once you go to the 19s or high into the 20s, triple digit down in the Dow and very strong uh, 20s or more uh, down in the futures. So I try to keep it simple. Under 13, there's buying pressure. Over 19, there's tremendous selling pressure. And in the middle, uh, it used to be that going to the 16 level was not a good sign. But now we've seen that more and more, that that that, that can hold. And, and you know, it's, it, it becomes a kind of a, a middle ground. And that's all there is to it. And look at these big spikes. When you went to 50.30 back in 2018, and look, this is right here. That was the week of, uh, this was in February of 2018. Higher yields, it was the same story, tariffs, the whole thing. 50.30, I always say that that was an aberration. I don't know why it went to 50.30. There wasn't that much bad news. And then you've had other ones. You've gone to uh, yields, China, uh, October of 2018. And then you've got right here, you've got, I should put the dates as well. I don't have to always look at it. December of last year, it only went to 36.20. But believe me, that should have been the one that was at 50.30. I mean, that was the Fed. There was a whole bunch of things going on. Huge moves down, 20 or 30 percent in some of the indices. More importantly, it was kind of the same story, higher yields, China, the impeachment, etc. So this is going to be an important moment for three reasons. Number one is that, at least I should say for me, in my work, it's suggesting that I could make a case that a little doji candle uh, in some of the uh, some of the key indices yesterday, um, that could be a turnaround. But the strength that I'm looking at here in the moving averages, in the MACD, the stochastics at 89%, I say over 80% is really good. In the 90% or higher area is really good. And here it is at 89.89. Um, so this is holding very well. So I suspect that it's room on the upside on the daily charts for a little longer going maybe into next week. Also seasonally, seasonally there's a lot of buying that comes in at this time. Or it's rare that we got the kind of sell-off that we got in last December. January sometimes can see some intense selling. Now, the weekly chart is in leg C. Now, you can get sharp moves to the downside. Look at this move from the week of the 12th of, sorry, the 6th of December, 28,109 to 27,325. That's a big move. And then, boom, it closes towards the high and we make higher highs. This is what I call the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. You see this? green dashed line and below it is the pink dashed line when prices get into that area in this case it would be you can go all the way up to the 28651 area in the dow um that's that's where it goes it doesn't mean you say you have to go there but i'm saying it, it goes from where we are to that level and that's the repellent zone also, there's a rising wedge formation. Usually, you have some kind of a dip after this concludes when it gets to some form of an apex. But the MACD is strong. The stochastic's at 94%. On balance volume is suggesting not everything's cozy. And the gray line, the relative strength index, is at about 60, uh, I'd say 63. That's good. So the parameters I'm looking at, it for this to turn negative for the Dow Daily, you would have to see 27,900. So that's over three, 300 points lower, maybe even four. I, I'd say to subscribers to my opening call this morning, I think it would take over 450 points just to get the moving averages to turn down sharply, the ones that I'm looking at that are key. So, so far, this is a good sign. The S&P, SPX.X, is the same thing. Leg B, 
Uh, look at that tiny little candle yesterday. That usually means slowing momentum, but not after you've had two days above a long-legged doji like it was four days ago. When it closes above that, it says, hey, wait a minute, don't rule out that there's residual strength. Now, what is interesting here is that you in a leg D in the S&P cash weekly, but not in the E. ES continuous contract is in leg C. And the new contract of the um, ES H20 is in leg C. So there's a, there's a divergence, SPX.X. There we are in leg D. Maybe one will catch up. But this is so unusual to have a B in, in a key index and then a D. And I've got the same thing happening here. It's the opposite. Here you've got a D in the weekly. You're only in, look, and the Dow, you're only in leg C. So these disparities, uh, they, they uh, actually uh, resolve themselves. Let's go to Max in Fort Lauderdale. Hi, Max. How are you? Yeah, good morning, Basil. Happy Hanukkah. And same to you. And a happy new and, year. Thank you. And uh, we were talking about the VIX. Uh, yes. Is there an ETF product that doesn't get any deterioration, that it follows the, the, the index uh, pretty good? You know, uh, Max, I think there must be at least 400,000, maybe a million people that are saying, asking that exact question. No, they all show, because <laughs> wouldn't it be great? I mean, you, let's face it, the VIX at, t at 12, if you could buy this thing and uh, just hold it. I had a conversation with someone a, a week ago. I, I was a guest speaker here in the Boston area. And, and someone came up and said, what if I just bought the VIX? Surely, I mean, it's been at 50, it's been at 100. Surely I could just hold the darn thing. I said, no. And as Dave White and Denny is saying, VIX is based on options which fade. So it's hard to imagine anything based on it and that can hold its its uh, um, full value, or at least the value that you buy it at. That is, that is so unfortunate because um, it would be wonderful to have an instrument that shows no deterioration at all in price, that it can move like an index up and down at the exact value that at the end of the day, it doesn't get uh, uh, re reconfigured. Hey, you want to hold on because there's something else I, I, I wanted to talk about. Okay, we've got Max holding yeah. on Fort, Fort Lauderdale. We'll be back. Dow's up 35. S&P's up $4.50. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Preservator. Good questions today. I'll try to get to that as soon as we return. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Nick. Hi, folks. Uh, so, Max, you're still there? Yes. So here's the problem, that if you were to, for instance, if you were to use an option strategy... In a, and you really look out, let's just say you use an option strategy and you give yourself months. You say, you know what, within the next six months, I can see a 3,000 point drop in the Dow. I don't know where it's going to on the upside, but whatever it is, I see a 3,000 point and that should make me some money. Well, <clears throat> the problem is the diminishing of the options premium is such that at a certain point, uh, one of the options could shrink to, I mean, by even 90%, could even be more. And the other, other option could be also shrinking, even though you're in the absolute right direction, it's shrinking because of time, if there's a time lapse. So I don't even see it th that way now. I'm trying to think, what are those things that they uh, call, I don't, haven't used them for ages and I'm forgetting the name, where you can buy uh, a tenth of the price or a very, a very small amount of money you can buy a, say, uh, on the Dow, you could buy Caterpillar, and you could buy, um, God, what do they call those things? It's not, not like an option, it's, but it's, a, it's actually a position, but it's a very, uh, um, it is, uh, the ratio, it's almost like the GLD is one-tenth the price of gold, and the IAU is one-tenth the price of the GLD. Now, someone in the den will tell me what it is. Uh, we have a caller. Uh, George from New York who often uses them, and I'm forgetting what it is, but there's a unit that you can buy that is, in fact, a, a time. It's got a time going out to January of 2020 or 22, uh, 2021, and you could buy that, but they don't have it in the VIX, and that's the problem. So, I, wow, I mean, so many people would, would want to do that, uh, a leap. There you are. Thank you. I knew that Peaky and the Dem would know. It's called a leap. And it's, it's like a position that you're getting in a smaller denomination, but then, of course, you can make up for it whatever amount of money you want to put in, but it's in a smaller denomination. So LEAP, if they had a LEAP uh, option, no, sorry, LEAP VIX, I think that would be one of the most popular vehicles around, but they don't. So um, it's really unfortunate. So the only way you can do this is to just say, I've got X amount of money I'm going to put aside as insurance, and I'm going to buy that, and I'm prepared to see, I'm not, I don't want to, but I'm prepared to see that X amount of money disappear. But at some point in the time frame that I choose, there should be a wonderful move in my direction. And that, that's about the only way that I can uh, think of it. Um, so, so the other thing is that people have rather complex ways of doing it because you can use options, but you have to, you do have a limit because you're going to have to protect one of the sides. So let me think and let me find out if I can get any more information about this on ways that you could do it as if you were buying one vehicle. You don't want to be having three with one, you know, 
one short and two longs or whatever it is. You just want one vehicle that is just sitting there. You can forget about it. And then one day there's this terrible news about whatever it is. And as bad as the news is, everybody's you know, feeling very sad about the news because the market is whatever. But you're feeling very good because you're protecting yourself or at least you're getting some profit. So that's all I can do. I, I, it's a great question. But I believe me, there must be, I, I'd say, I'd say a lot of fund managers would love a vehicle like this just to sit there as protection. They know they're going to be giving up some of their gains, but at least they've, they've got something there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's all I can tell you. I haven't given you much information per se, but I've, I've, I've at least elaborated on the, the frustration in that there is no vehicle that says, hey, I think one of these days we're going to have a 3,000 point move on the Dow to the downside. And that's how I'm going to buy this uh, this particular vehicle, and it should do very well. But we don't have it. Okay, thank you, Basil. Thank you very much. Have a great New Year. Thank you for calling. I appreciate that. So, folks, uh, so Dave White's got a lot of information. I don't have time right this moment to read it. He's always a font of, of uh, a wealth of information. Sorry, Dave. I'll, I'll get to that. So, the couple of questions that I had just where, where did it go? Uh, GBTC. Do I have, I have the GBTC, I could get the um, futures. I just don't want to go to that right now. It's going to kind of confuse a whole bunch of things that I've got up. So the GBTC, which is the Bitcoin, had a spectacular move back in December of 2018. And it went all the way to 38.71 after coming public at somewhere around the uh, six dollar area i'd say that's a pretty good move so this is the bitcoin investment trust and then it has a little bit of a fall it goes from 38.71 it drops about 90 percent to three dollars and 66 cents and then it has a bounce a really good bounce everyone thought okay this is it it's all over now we've got a bull market again and that went to 17 dollars and 40 cents that's a big move five-fold or four-fold move um but comes all the way back it's trading now at eight I don't see anything in this vehicle right now. The 7.49 is the weekly 200 period exponential moving average. I think it's going to get close to that. I do see both Bitcoin and the MJ, which is the alternate harvest um, ETF for um, the cannabis sector, alternate harvest e ETF, cannabis sector. Uh, which went all the way to 46, 45, 40. Remember, that was the same thing back in, uh, was that the high? Let me just check. Yeah, that, that was the high. That was back in, I think it was the summer, if I remember correctly. Someone saying to me, oh, the, the son-in-law just bought it and he's doing so well. And I said, mm, I have to be a little careful. And it was 45.40, and that was the week of the 20th of September. Did they have a little bit of a fall to the 23s, got cut in half. And now it's, it had a good bounce to 38, and now it's trading at 17. Here again, I do think in 2020, at some point, um, both the MJ and the GBTC will have a pretty good rally. But I do think that until they both look that as an IPO, MJ has just been around for uh, since 2016. Uh, it's it, Maybe um, cannabis of some form or another has been around since the beginning of time, but this has only been on the stock market for about a year and a half, two years. Uh, it's a baby. It needs to be mature. It needs to have a whole bunch of things going on legally. Uh, it needs to, the, the companies need to work out how they're going to uh, make money. A lot of them are losing money. So just in that regard, it needs time. And the GBTC is an alternate coin. I just think it, it's not its time. I think it will be its time at some point. Not yet. Um, now, the other thing I want to look at here, there was a question I had about oh, um, IBM. Question here was, what is a Basil, please look at IBM, see if you see an entry price close to the current value. Have the best of days, Tim. So, Tim, I have a problem with IBM. I would mentioned this some time ago, a long time ago. In fact, now they've got a couple of kids. So it has to be five years ago, four years ago. I was in, and the Catskills, uh, um, there's a, a hotel there. It was a very nice wedding. And I'm in the Catskills, and 
IBM has its headquarters right nearby. I can't remember what the uh, Mount Mount of Tulloch or something. And I meet this guy, and he's he's been at IBM for 23 years. I said, Wow, they've been they've struggled for so long. Have they gotten together with the cloud? He said, It's a work in progress. I just think they've missed the boat in all these areas. I'll talk about an entry point as soon as we get back. We've got a brief section coming up. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sending in for Larry Bezavento. The e-money is up three. The Dow Fusion is up 29. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Oh, folks, we're back. Armonk, that's where it is. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, not really in the Catskills, well, I thought it was kind of in that area. It's near Hudson, it's near that whole... In the, uh, by the river. Okay, so IBM trading 134.39. I I would rather see it come back to the 133, 132 area in an arch formation and then hold and then start another move up because that second move up will say it's starting to make higher highs and higher lows. So that's all I can say. Now, there's another way to do it, Tim. If you do like IBM, then why don't you just start a position? We're only talking about two, three points, uh, 134. That's not a big deal in terms of just starting a little starter position. Right here, 134. But unless by today's Wednesday, by Friday afternoon or Monday morning, if it hasn't tried to tackle the high of the 16th of 135.45, um, that, that's just not good action. So it's this is not a favorite chart pattern of mine at all. 
but it will improve a lot if we can start to trade in the 135.50s. Just a point higher, that's amazing. And it's, it's struggling to do that. So that's the way I look at it. Maybe start a little position here and just let's be, uh, be in touch with me if it starts to trade in the 135.60s and then we'll see if, it, if the weekly chart is starting to improve because that's stochastics flat. So just before we wrap up, because this is it, I'll be doing my show at noon today. There we go through stocks. We go through a whole bunch of other things and uh, hopefully it will be uh, interesting. But yeah, we were doing mostly commodities because that's what Larry does. In the meantime, back at the ranch, have a wonderful day. And uh, I, hope, I think Larry's back tomorrow. So that should be great. And uh, the Dow is up 27. Let's see what happens by the end of the day. You can use the VIX as a gauge because if the VIX, which is trading right now at 12.23, down six pennies, starts to move into the 12.72 area as the market starts to go, the Dow goes down 40 points, the S&P goes down five. That means we've got a lousy close probably today and a, a, a week Thursday. But I do see higher highs coming based on my daily charts. So keep in mind that it could just be temporary. The market just kind of in a wait and see attitude. Let's see what happens. Have a wonderful day. Hope to see you at noon Eastern time. Otherwise, you'll be back tomorrow for Larry. Thanks for being here.